Yo, what's going on everybody? Shri Kanase here. So how to monitor your Google ads campaigns in 2021 and onward. Let's face it, the entire advertising platform has changed. There are so many different rules when it comes to advertising now, especially in 2021 with things like Google Merchant Center bans and so forth. These things directly have a big impact on how your ads perform, how your ads are shown to the general public, and also how you should monitor them. Because if you guys have been following me for a while, and if you haven't, be sure to destroy that subscribe button down below. But I released a video on exactly Exactly how to do monitoring for Google Ads campaigns which you can check out some of those parts still work however in this video I'm going to be going over some new things which I started looking at in order to really monitor my Google Ads campaigns and make sure they come out right at the top but without wasting any more time let's just jump right into it the first thing you'll have to do in order to find any type of success with these strategies I'm about to reveal is to destroy that like button until it turns blue I promise it's gonna take just two quick seconds okay hopefully I've done that but let's start off by diving right into my main Google ads account for one of my main Shopify stores. So as you can see, within the last 30 days, this account has done a large volume and total number of sales and total cost in general. So if we go all the way down, we can see that within the last 30 days, this account spent roughly $14,000. And of course, all of the conversions were not really properly tracked but in the end came out to around $46,000, about $50,000. So this lets you know that the ROAS is absolutely real when it comes to Google ads, which is why I recommend it in the first place. But just to show you guys, this is hundred percent real. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this so that you guys can see that none of this was Photoshopped. I did not go in and change anything by myself. So as you can see, it is fully loading right now. Once it's loaded, I'm going to go ahead and take you guys over to the bottom to show you guys. So let's scroll all the way to the bottom. So we see right here, $14,803. And if we look at the total of conversions, again, 46,900, about 50,000. So 100% real results. And of course, this data is not 100% correct, but I want to show you guys exactly how I even achieved these results when it comes to monitoring my Google ads campaigns, because without taking the right steps and excluding the bad products, keywords, and so forth, I would not have been able to achieve such results. So for this example and this video in general, I'm going to be diving into my main general testing campaign, which is the first one right here. As you can see, it is currently run at $400 a day. And if we look so far within the last 30 days, it spent the most amount of money. But what I want you to take a note at is pause this video for just two quick seconds and look at all of the columns which I've laid out. It's really important that you lay out your Google Ads account in the following way so that you can properly monitor everything. So the first thing, impressions, click CTR, average CPC, and so forth. And if you go all the way to the right, we can see that it ends right here with invalid click rate. So hopefully you have paused the video and put your account in this proper manner. But let's start off by looking at some of the data exactly. What should you be looking at in the first place to make some decisions? So first things first, the most important criteria, which I look at always for my campaigns is CTR. Now, CTR is not directly going to influence whether I shut off a campaign or not, but it definitely influences what kind of results I get. So I always like to look at the CTR column, but in addition, I like to go up over here and go to the performance section to, go, to then click CTR to see how my CTR was performing within the last 30 days because that really lets you know how your campaigns were running whether they were good or not one main thing a lot of people fail to realize is that ctr should always be your focus because the higher it is the more your quality score and the higher your quality score the better your results you will get with your campaign so right now we can see that within the last 30 days it was 0 0.88 it was kind of fluctuating all over the place but overall very consistent now my goal is always to get this to one percent or higher it becomes a little bit difficult when you have a lot of products on your account now for this account i have over a thousand products running especially within this campaign which is why ctr may not always be as high as we would like but ctr definitely the first thing i look at to monitor my campaigns to make sure then that that campaign is in the proper manner Manner, and that it's getting me the result that I want when it comes to the exact metric of the CTR. Next I look at is of course average CPC. Now CPC is going to depend per campaign depending on what you set your max CPC to it's going to really be different for each person out there. But what I normally like to do is I like to set this CPC at around 
35 cents to 50 cents for general testing campaigns and let it run. But once it gets enough data, and if we look at all time for this Google ads account, we can see that this general testing campaign spent roughly $80,000, which is why the CPC is so low. One thing people fail to realize is that Google requires time. You can't really force Google to work quickly like you can with Facebook. That's why the more it spends, the more time you let it take the lower your CPC is going to be and the smarter the algorithm is going to work for you. So CPC definitely is a big thing. If you have a very high CPC, you may be unprofitable. So be sure to look at that and set a CPC, which you can be profitable at. Again, my personal preference is 35 to 50 cents. But next thing I look at is of course the cost. Normally for new Google ads accounts, if the campaign has spent over $100, $200, maybe even $300 with zero sales, there's definitely a problem. You want to go ahead and check your products, check the landing pages, see if there is any issue there. But otherwise, cost is going to mostly tell me how my campaign is performing, if it is profitable at that cost or not. Now, for example, right now, since January just started when I'm recording this video, people have already spent a large portion of their budget when it comes to shopping. And because of that, this campaign is definitely suffering. The ROAS is on the lower end for these past few days. So what I normally look at is I look at the cost to see if it is overspending, if it's spending enough or not. And based on that, I make my decisions. So if I'm unprofitable within the past few days, I'll go ahead and lower the cost, but not touch the bid or anything especially if it was already working. If it's really doing well and bringing in a very high ROAS, I'll go in and adjust the cost, maybe 20% increases every seven days or so. So that's normally what I do when it comes to the cost. Now the next column on my list is conversion. However, I don't really pay much attention to it because the next few columns are going to determine whether these conversions that are listed in this column have any meaning or not. So we're going to look at the cost over conversion. Now this number is extremely important because it is telling you what is the cost per conversion that you're getting? Are you getting it at a profitable rate or are you getting it at a loss? Of course, if you're getting it at a loss, you want to go in and change some things so that this changes and goes a little bit down. For me, since I sell both mid ticket, high ticket and low ticket items, $37 per conversion is a great number because some of the products that I sell go all the way up to $500 and more. So it is again going to depend per account, but this will let you know, especially if it's a brand new account, not spending too much money or you're within a niche, whether the product that you're selling have any value or not. We're going to go inside this campaign to look at the individual products as well. But overall, this is what I look at. And one thing I want to mention is that I look at last 14 days to last 30 days worth of data. I don't really look at last seven because with Google ads, it takes up to 14 days for all of the conversions to be properly recorded. So if you look at last seven, the data may not be accurate enough for you to make decisions. Next, we move on to the conversion rate. This number is just going to tell you what conversion rate your campaign is getting. Of course, the higher it is, the better. But in my opinion, you want to be looking at those other metrics in order to really improve them, such as CTR, lower the CPC, in order to kind of increase this conversion rate. But next column is conversion value over cost. Basically, what is your return on ad spend for that campaign? So right now we can see that this campaign has an average return on ad spend of 3.21. If you scroll all the way down, we can see that this account within the past 30 days got a 3.17 ROAS. Of course, this is not the right number. A lot of the sales were not calculated properly, but ROAS again, very important. It lets you know how much you're spending to get back. So I'm getting a three times return on my money for this first campaign. Of course, this number is also important because it lets you know if you're in the positive or the negative when it comes to profits. Since I have so many products in this account, this number is definitely in the positive, but our main goal is to always try to bring it all the way up as possible. Now, next thing is conversion value. Again, very simple, how much sales you've gotten so far with the account. So not too much to do there, but let's move on to the next thing, search impression share. Now, a lot of people really don't even know what search impression share is. In my opinion, this is one of the most important things you can add because let's read exactly what it says. So it says search impression share is the impressions you've received on Google search sites divided by the estimated number of impressions you were eligible to receive. So overall, if I was eligible to receive 100 impressions for this campaign as a whole, in this case, I only received 25% of it or 25 impressions in total. So this number is really important again, because it lets you know how you are performing 
compared to everybody else are your ads ranking or not are you getting enough search impressions for your ads or not normally a, lo a lot of people believe that the higher this number is the better in my opinion that is not true at all because as you can see with the 25 percent search impression share i'm at a three row ads and even more if we calculate the real sales from this campaign so it doesn't really matter whether it is close to 100 percent or not however it definitely helps if you have more search impression shares but don't get too stuck up on this as long as you're profitable as long as your campaigns are spending all of the budget that is an okay number to have it and usually for dropshipping stores it will range anywhere from 15 percent to 30 percent depending on the bid but let's move on to the next thing and that is click share again it's very similar to search impression share but in this case if there's 100 clicks in the market how many clicks are you getting out of those 100 clicks in this case i'm only getting 10 percent so about 10 clicks out of 100 in total these two things depend a lot on what kind of ad you're running what kind of title you have what kind of image you have pricing description etc so in order to improve these i highly recommend you focus on the product page make sure your title and descriptions are search engine optimized i made a great video on this which you can check out on my channel i'll leave the link in the description below but seo definitely helps a lot for this make sure the pricing is competitive again i've made tons of tutorials on that which you can check out i won't really go over them but i really look at these two numbers to monitor my campaigns make sure they're in the right amount because if i notice search impression share is going down and let's go ahead and look at the chart above to see what is going on with all of that stuff so for search impression share again we can change it between daily and weekly i like to leave it at weekly but for now let's look at daily so if we look at daily within the last 30 days it has been around a very consistent rate of about 25 percent to 30 percent it definitely did decrease come january which means new competitors may have come into the market maybe some of the products which i was selling now are getting saturated or maybe my quality score has gone down for the campaign so as you can see the change in my search impression share is really not that big overall it went from about 27 percent to 22 percent and then now it's back at 23 the main reason is because once january started i did lower the bid of my general testing campaign so this is when bids really play an effect if you're unprofitable you may have to lower the bids and this is a perfect example of what happens when you lower the bid your search impression share goes down because now you're bidding lower but again it doesn't really matter if this lowering of the bid is going to make you profitable once again so that's exactly what i did let's look at now click share to see what i would do based on that data so with the click share again bid definitely impacts that so from the beginning click share did go down overall but now as you can see it's going back up that's simply because my campaigns are getting used to the data that my products are getting and now they're performing much much better because the algorithm is getting smarter so that's exactly how i use search impression share and click share to monitor my campaigns basically determine whether they're going up or down and whether that change is making me profitable or getting me in a loss but let's move on to our next few columns which is the invalid click rate now these other columns i don't really pay much attention to when it comes to shopping ads but invalid click rate that's simply the click rate which describes your competitors or basically bots clicking on your ads there's a lot of bots out there which randomly click on your ads this number really you can't do much with however you can subscribe to various software out there which kind of lowers this rate so you're getting more real clicks instead of bot clicks but the good thing about google is that it doesn't really charge you for these clicks but let's go inside our campaign now to see a little bit more with the products and how you can use these same metrics to determine whether you should keep the products or get rid of them so we're inside the product section of the general testing campaign as you can see various different products here let's look at the ones that spent the most money so of course i start off by looking at the cost clicks impressions look to see if it's getting any clicks and impressions or not next i move on to of course the main important metric which is ctr as you guys can see each product is going to have different ctr based on how you chose the images how you did the titles descriptions etc so these ctrs range all the way from 0.97 all the way down to about 2.99 up to three percent sometimes even up to five percent so that's why it's really important to make sure that you change your images if you notice that the ctr is very very low in fact if my ctr was for example in this case any less than 0.30 so as you can see these products have zero clicks so far with a lot of impressions so if you scroll just a little bit down we can see that there's a lot of products with zero until we get here so 0.06 percent ctr that is a very very low number in this case what i always do is i try changing the image and then wait 14 days if that doesn't help i try changing the price for that product and wait 14 days if that still doesn't help that's when i exclude the product completely so these are a few 
things I do if I notice a very, very low CTR. Again, anything less than 0.30. If it's above 0.30, I normally don't really touch it, especially if it's getting sales. But that brings me to the average CPC. Now, if it's a maximized clicks general testing campaign, this number really is irrelevant because you can't really change it individually. However, if you do plan to create a scaling campaign, you will be able to know exactly what is a bit that is working for you. So for instance, if you scroll just a little bit to the right, we can see that this product right here has a 4.23 ROAS at a CPC of 0.15. That lets me know that that is a perfect CPC. If I'm feeling a little bit extra daring or bold, I might try to increase that just a little bit to 0.20 to see if that works. But that's exactly what I do when I look at average CPC. I compare my average CPC to my conversion value over the cost, meaning my ROAS, to see how far I can scale that product. Of course, if your ROAS is like anything below 2.0 or anything that is making you unprofitable and you know that it is unprofitable, I highly recommend you get rid of that product as soon as possible. I don't really let bad products run hoping that they would sell because very rarely that's going to happen and you might just end up losing money with that product. So that's exactly what I do when it comes to looking at average CPC and my ROAS. Next, of course, conversions column. We don't really pay attention. Conversion rate. I look at this conversion rate to then figure out whether my product page needs any improvement. As you guys can see with the ROAS of 4.23, I do have a decent conversion rate for that product individually of 0.49. That number really doesn't always make sense because as you can see, the next product has an average conversion rate of 0.59 with a ROAS of 2.49, so much lower than this product. So again, take this with a grain of salt. These other metrics like conversion value over cost, average CPC, how much you spend, and if you're even profitable with the product are much more important. Looking at cost per conversion, Again, this is going to depend on every product. Every product is different. If one product brings you profits at $30, that's good. If the next product brings you a loss at 30, that's bad. You want to get rid of that, especially if it spends more than your profit margin. So for instance, if the profit margin for this product was $25 and this product spent over 25 already, that means I would go ahead and possibly exclude it completely. And again, I like to look at last 14 days worth of data to make sure I'm doing the right things when it comes to cost per conversion. But again, you can look at the other metrics like search impression share, click share for the products themselves. However, I just look at the individual campaign as a whole to determine that. But that is exactly how I really monitor my campaigns, make sure they're in working order and make sure the products that are running within are actually getting me results. And this is the same technique I do for keywords. I don't do anything different really. I make sure that keyword that is associated with the product is profitable and within my profit margins. If it's not, I get rid of it completely. I just simply exclude it. But this is the overall strategy. If you found any type of value in this video, destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.